Hey everybody, RetroPie Guy here. Today we're going to do a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to modify and install RetroPie on an Arcade 1-Up Arcade Cabinet. For this video today, we're going to be using the Final Fight Arcade 1-Up Arcade Cabinet. So let's get started. All right, what you're going to need to get started is a Raspberry Pi 4 with at least 4 gigabytes RAM, a Raspberry Pi 4 cooling fan case, an SD card with RetroPie and your game collection on it, a Raspberry Pi power supply cable, a Type D micro HDMI to HDMI cable, an LCD controller board with settings button board, a two channel audio amplifier, and an arcade button and joystick kit if you plan to upgrade your arcade buttons and joysticks. And some tools that we're gonna need include a Phillips head screwdriver, a pair of scissors, a power strip, Velcro tape, zip ties, a quarter inch to inch and three eighths step bit, and a drill. All right, so the first thing that we need to do is we need to take out the LCD board in the back of this arcade one-up cabinet. In order to do that, we're gonna make sure that it's unplugged from the wall. We're just gonna turn it around here and take the back panel off. It's important that you disconnect this cable here. It's just a quick release from the rest of your uh, cable that plugs into the wall. And now we have three screws here. We have one here, one here, and then one about dead center here. So we're just gonna unscrew these and take this back panel off. So the room with this, we'll just put our finger in here. We'll lower it down. Now you will see in here, we have a power cord going in. Now we just have to pull this down here real gently. And then we can take the rest of our panel out all the way. All right, so once we have that back panel off, you can see that we have the housing here for the LCD board. We have a screw on each side, so we need to unscrew both of these screws in order to access the LCD board. All right, so once we get that off, we'll see that we have the LCD connector here, we have the power, and we have a ground in the corner. All these we need to disconnect. So in order to do that, we can just gently pull on these here. We'll see it pops right off. Same thing for the LCD connector here. This one's got a few extra connections to it, so it's a little bit harder to do. If you rock it back and forth, it works best. And then we have the ground here, which is just another screw, uh, same size as the ones on the housing there. So we'll unscrew that, grab the screw. So now that this is disconnected, you can see that this has another connection here to the bottom of the monitor. Now we can just rock that one back and forth too and fully remove that. So now we have this entire thing here uh, fully removed. We don't need this anymore, but it's good to save in case you ever wanna undo the uh, RetroPie and go back to this. So we'll save it. All right, so once that's been removed, we're gonna take our LCD control board here, and we're gonna connect that to the ground wire first. So now the ground goes right here in the corner. If you go off of this white cable here, you'll see a little hole right there, and that's where we're gonna connect the ground wire. So we take the ground wire, we're gonna need the nut and bolt that came along with this. So here I have the bolt here. I'm just gonna put it first through the ground wire loop I'm gonna line it up on the hole here, and I'm just gonna thread that bolt that came along with it here on the back side. So it's great if you have some help with this because it is a little bit difficult to do by yourself. You have to kind of play with it just so you don't cross thread it. And once you get it uh, threaded properly, you just have to tighten it and it's, it's good. You don't have to crank it down or anything like that. Don't go crazy if you go nuts tightening this. Uh, it will crack your board here and then you're totally out of luck. So we're just gonna give it, just by holding the back of this nut here with our finger, we'll just tighten it slightly with the screwdriver. Again, we're not gonna go crazy. Um, there's gonna be no movement in here once this is fully mounted, so it doesn't have to be super tight. So next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna plug in the power here, which is the um, black, yellow, and red cable hanging out of the back of our Arcade 1UP monitor. We're gonna plug that into our board here. So the plug-in for the board is this box right here. So it's right next to where we just did the ground wire. So we're just gonna gently push that right into the slot there. 
Uh, again, we don't want to use any excessive force or anything like that. It just slides in um, ever so slightly there. Um, it doesn't click or anything like that, so you don't have to go crazy trying to push that in there. Once it's, you know, doesn't doesn't go any further, that's it. You don't have to go crazy. All right, so once the power has been connected, we're going to take the LCD connector here. Now, if you look closely, there's a little yellow dot here on this, um, and where the red wires come in, you want that to be on the left-hand side over here, um, closer to where the ground wire was. So this, again, connects right next to this um, white wire here that's hanging down. So we'll just line that up gently. And real gently push it down. We don't want to go crazy with this because those pins inside are super easy to bend or uh, entirely break off if we... Um, aren't super careful here. So again, once it's not going any further, you can take a closer look at it too, just to verify that it is all the way down as far as it can go. But don't be a brute and, and um, put a ton of pressure on here. You could definitely do some damage if you're not careful. All right, so now once all of our connections have been made, we're gonna mount the board and the option board here right to the back of our monitor. So you can actually put it down here on the panel um, which would be ideal. My uh, cables here are actually a little bit too short, so I'm gonna mount it just like this. Now you can use double-sided sticky tape. I do find that that wears out after a while. So I'm actually gonna use um, sticky Velcro, which you can buy these 3M strips and then just cut them to size. So I'm gonna do that right now real quick. All right, so once our board has been replaced in the back here, we're actually gonna leave this open. We're not gonna put our panel on just yet because we're gonna have to get back in here when we attach our Raspberry Pi in a little while. So for right now, we're gonna jump to the other side and we're gonna start working on the controls. All right, so we're moving on to the control board now. So for this Final Fight cabinet, we only have two buttons and a joystick for player one and player two. Ideally, we'd like to have at least a six button configuration in my opinion. I think that gives us more options with RetroPie to play the majority of the games on there. So for this particular model, we're only gonna be able to add two additional buttons. We're not gonna be able to do six because we just can't fit them. If you look over here, we do have a speaker box here. So that eliminates the option of putting more buttons north of the two that are already on here. So we can go with two below, but we do run the uh, issue of coming up to the, right up to the edge of the front of the cabinet here, because this does taper off in here. So we don't have uh, as much room to work as it appears from the top, because the underneath part here is angled down this way. So the other issue that we run into with this specific cabinet is the labels are really big. So the attack one specifically, if we added another button right below here with a um, matching the gap between these two buttons, we would end up with part of the A or part of the K hanging out from underneath our button, which just doesn't look well at all. It looks super sloppy. So we're gonna have to put it right below these labels for the additional buttons here. Uh, the issue with that is there is a little bit more of a gap, but like I said, I don't wanna go through these and have part of the A or the K hanging out on both sides. Uh, it's unfortunate that we will have to go through part of these barbed wire graphics here but we are going to be able to preserve the Final Fight white logo here. That's dead center. So for this modification, we're going to be swapping out both joysticks and all the buttons on here, including the start buttons up at the top. Uh, the reason for that is it's just super hard to go in and match the buttons. So you're better off if you're going to be adding buttons, just do a whole new set so everything's uniform and matches. I also got some LED ones, so they will light up nicely. Um, these aren't bad quality, but they're not great enough where you should go out and try to find the exact same ones and, and match them, unless you really like the way that they look. Uh, there's nothing super fancy about these, so it's just going to be easier to go in and, and fully replace everything. So let's get started. First thing that we're going to do is we're going to take out this top panel here. To do that, we have to take out the four screws. There's two on each side here. So we'll grab our screw gun and just unscrew these. They're just barely screwed in. Um, they're long screws, but they're not threaded um, a whole lot. So just a couple turns, we'll loosen these and, and take them right out for you. So once those four screws are out, we can just lift this panel out. And since we took that connection out from the backhand side, there's nothing holding this in here at all. It's totally free. So we don't have to worry about uh, pulling any wires or ruining any cables that are hanging from this. 
All right, so now that we've removed our control panel, we need to flip it over in order to take the backside off. So you can see this plastic piece here that covers the backside of the controls. It actually has uh, one, two, three, four, five, six screws on here. So we need to lay this on its face, um, just up against the joysticks. We're not worried about that since we're gonna be replacing them anyways. And we need to take out all six of these screws. You can use a screw gun or a screwdriver since we get all six screws off, we can just lift this back piece right off. And you can see now we can have access to our buttons and our joysticks and the start buttons. And we have the speaker here on the top left corner, which we're gonna leave on there. So now that we have full access to the back of our controls here, we're gonna start disconnecting everything. Since we're gonna be replacing all the buttons and the joysticks on here, we're gonna start with the board up, up at the top. We're gonna just unscrew these couple of screws that are keeping that attached. And then we'll take a pair of scissors. We're just gonna cut these zip ties here just to make life a little bit easier. So if you are replacing everything, you can actually cut the wires if you want. I'm just gonna show you how they come apart here. So you just wanna take the wires that go into the buttons and just firmly pull them up. Super easy. So there's really no reason you have to go in here and start cutting everything. They're really easy to detach. We're gonna do that for each of the buttons here. Sometimes you do have to wiggle them a little bit. And now to get these buttons out, we're just gonna pinch, if you look closely on here, there's little tabs on the top and bottom. If you just pinch these like this, you can push them right through. So I'll show you how that works here. Just pinching both tabs and just give it a little push at the same time and it'll come right through just like that out the other end. Do that for each of these. All right, so all of our buttons have been fully removed. We are gonna be leaving the on and off and the volume buttons here um, alone. We're gonna reuse those and we're gonna keep the speaker intact. We'll just connect both of those over to the um, new controls that we put in. So what we need to do now is we need to take out the two joysticks. So first thing we need to do is we need to flip it back over and we're gonna unthread the balls on top just so we're able to pull this through. So if you pinch tightly, they can be a little bit stubborn at first. Um, there we go you're able to just twist these off. And if you spin them, they'll just unscrew completely like that. Same with the other side here. And they do roll on you pretty good. So um, if you are reusing those, just hold on to them tight because they could get damaged super easily. So we'll take these little caps off. So once we flip it over, we just have to take out now, there's four screws, two on top, two on bottom for each of the, the two joysticks here. So we're just gonna take our screw gun and unscrew those. All right, so once those four screws on each joystick housing are removed, we do have to take these out. So you can see here, they actually do use a little bit of adhesive um, in addition to the screws. Now I've done some of these where there's no adhesive at all. These are on there pretty good. So I'm actually gonna take just a little chisel or you can do anything. Um, anything that can just get up underneath the etching here. And you're just gonna real lightly, just pry it up ever so slightly here. We don't wanna do any damage, but we do wanna loosen up the metal a little bit so it breaks that adhesive bond. see where the adhesive was on here um, a little bit on each corner so luckily all this is gonna be on the bottom so we don't have to worry about it being too neat and pretty all right so once these joysticks have been fully removed now the last thing we need to do is we just have to trace the wires from the speaker and the volume control and the power here back to our board and just remove those so we'll just follow them back and real gently just wiggle them back and forth till they pop out of the control panel here.
So once those wires have been removed, we can flip this over and you can see now we have our control panel completely cleaned out here. All right, so now we're ready to map out where we're gonna put the additional holes to install our buttons. So a tip I've picked up along the way is, is we actually take one of our buttons that we've already removed from here. Now this isn't a button we're gonna be using, this is a button we're gonna be discarding after this. So we're going to actually push in the back plastic piece here all the way in so it's totally flush here on the back. It does come out just a little bit, but when we put it up against the hard surface, it pushes right in. So you can see on this profile, this is totally flat here. So we're gonna put this onto our control panel and we can actually trace the hole that we need to make here. That's just gonna be another step that will allow us to see exactly how it looks before we actually cut the hole. Now we can measure this out and, and make sure that everything's perfect, but without being able to see firsthand what it's gonna look like, we're not gonna be 100% sure on the outcome. So this was just a tip I've picked up along the way. I think it's super effective and a really great way of doing this. So I'm gonna show you real quick exactly how I do it. So I'm gonna put some regular blue painter's tape here. Uh, it's best to get the ones that have the, um, it says sharp lines on here. It's just coated a little bit better. It's going to just adhere better and um, it's not gonna pull off any of our graphics or anything like that. So we're actually gonna put this right below where our letters go, just right underneath it so we know exactly, you know, how low we need to go on here. And I'm gonna put just a couple pieces. I'm not pushing it down super firm or anything. It's still easy to peel up here. If I just, you know, drag my fingernail on here, I can you know, pull it right back up. It's not um, not going to be on here long at all either. So it's not going to cause us any problems. So we're going to do that on both sides of this. Just eyeballing it. You want to be just a, a hair underneath these labels here. So what this is going to do is it's going to make when we go to drill these holes, it's going to just be a lot easier. It's not going to chew up the edging around here. So you can see these holes that were done in the factory are super crisp. With us doing it freehand, we do run the risk of having it be a, a little shoddy around the edges, um, especially if we're doing this and we're not super familiar with um, the step drill bits. So this is just gonna make sure that it doesn't end up scratching around or anything like that. It just creates a surface where it has a little bit more grab to it. All right, so now that we've got our tape on our control board here, it's time to start mapping out where we're gonna put the holes for our additional buttons. So I'm gonna show you a shortcut in order to do this, and it's gonna be different for each version that you do. So I'm gonna take out my plexiglass protector here, which I did just break by dropping it from like, not even a foot off of the ground. And I just Googled these and it appears that they're not making them anymore. So I'm gonna to have to figure out what I'm gonna do about this, but I can still use it for what I need it for today. So what we're gonna do here is, so you can see here that it matches up perfectly with our existing holes for these buttons up at the top. So we're actually just gonna, since we're doing two more down here, we're gonna just lower this down. So if I pick it up slightly here, just so we get over these two buttons up at the top, we're gonna match it up, make sure that the edges are even, and we're just gonna slide it down to where we would want it. So we want it right about there underneath these labels here. And we're just gonna make sure that we have the same distance on each side here. And then just to make sure everything is perfect, we're gonna take some measurements here. So we're gonna do one inch from the bottom of each of these holes here. So we'll measure one inch and make sure that it's right where it needs to be. All right, so right now all of these are in the exact same spot. So we're gonna take a pen and we're just gonna mark all these circles. So the next thing that we're gonna do is we're just gonna measure and just make sure that our distance is the same on each of these four holes that we're gonna be making. All right now, so now that we've gotten our four holes traced in, we're gonna take our protective piece again, put it back down on our control board where it would normally sit up across those top holes that are already in. And we're gonna take one last measurement. This last measurement is gonna be the distance on this cut in on the plastic protective piece to the edge of the control board. So we're measuring from the edge right up to this line here. 
where the plastic cut is. So we're just under four inches here. And we're gonna measure that right here now. Perfect. And now we're gonna do the same thing on this end. We're measuring from the edge of this plastic cut to the edge of the control board. So you can see that these holes are good to go. They're exactly where we need to be. So now we can start cutting into this. So now to start cutting in, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make actually a pilot hole in each of these. Now a pilot hole is where we drill a hole dead center on each of these circles, and then we can insert in our step bit here. So it'll sit in there versus if we're just trying to cut from a flat surface here and it's gonna kinda of move around a little bit and potentially get off center and then we end up with a hole not where we want it. And the other thing we need to do is we need to take our step bit here, drop it into the existing hole here, and just take note of where it lines up on here. So if we look here, we're on the second line, second line from the bottom. So if we take that out now and we take a look at this, our second line from the bottom is an inch and a quarter here. So we know that when we start doing these, we need to go to an inch and a quarter depth in order to get the right depth. All right, so next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna drill out those pilot holes. So we're gonna go dead center on here. We're going to do that to each of these. So you can see we have a hole in the center of each of these here. All right, so once we have our pilot holes drilled out on all four of those, now it's time to take our step bit here. And again, make sure you know exactly what depth you're going to in order to have the right diameter on your hole. We're going to put those in right into the center of the pilot hole and start drilling in. All right, so as you can see here, we've drilled out the additional holes for player one and player two. So we have the two extra holes right below the original holes that were up here. And so we're ready to start. Right, so before we go in here and we install our buttons, I will say this. If you have a protector here that you need to make additional holes for, hopefully you don't because it is kind of a pain that I have to do. But if you do, like I have to do, uh, provided you don't break it like I did. So I'm not gonna actually be doing this today because I'm not utilizing this piece anymore. I have to find a replacement to do this or something else I can add over here to protect the um, control panel. But if you do have to go and make holes, I'm gonna show you exactly the best way to do that today. So first thing you do is you put it on so it lines up with the, all the original holes here, and then you're gonna trace these holes that you need to make. So you see here, I've traced these. Now I can go and take this panel off. Don't need that anymore. So you can see the two holes that I... So the best way to do this is, is you need to go in and make a pilot hole just like we did previously, but First, you're gonna to need to put a piece of wood underneath here, like this, because if you just start trying to drill directly into this plexiglass, it's just gonna break. So you wanna do it like this, where you have something where you can drill into the wood behind here. So if we take our drill, line it up dead center, and real slow, we don't wanna to put too much pressure. Just like that, we end up with our pilot hole. So once you feel the tip of your bit going into the wood, that's when you wanna back right back out. You don't wanna keep spinning and spinning because you will end up cracking this if you go too crazy. So you can say, I'm a little bit off center here. Again, I wasn't trying to line it up perfect because I'm not gonna be using this. So we have our pilot holes. Now we can go in and grab our step bit here put the end of this right into the pilot hole there. And again, real slow. And you're just gonna work on that. It's, you're gonna have to eventually, you know, put that whole step bit right through the wood that's behind here in order to get through this plexiglass. But you can see I'm making the hole bigger. It would just take a little while because you do want to go kind of slow on that. You don't want to go crazy. Again, I'm not using this, so I'm not gonna go through and, and do this because I actually have to take this and try to find a replacement. All right, so now we're ready to start putting our buttons on. In order to do that, we're gonna put down our protector over our deck, and we're gonna start dropping our buttons in like this. All right, so once we install all of our buttons, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna thread these nuts onto the back side of them and tighten them up.
All right, so now that our buttons are installed, it's time to install our joysticks. All right, so in order to install these joysticks, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna unscrew the ball on the top and remove this ring that comes on here. And we'll set those aside for right now. And now the next thing that we need to do is we need to flip this over, but I'll show you exactly what we're gonna do first. We're gonna be putting this through here like so, but we're gonna to need to be able to make sure that this is dead center in here so that the post is coming up right in the center of the hole. And in order to do that, if we're not working with a partner on this and we're doing it entirely by ourselves, this is what I recommend doing. I recommend flipping this over on the edge of a table. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna line this up so your joystick goes straight down here. And you're gonna to need to go underneath here and just look and position this so that your post is dead center. So that puts me right there. Now I recommend putting in one screw first before we continue. And we're gonna keep this screw Pretty loose, but it's still holding this in place. We're gonna double check it again underneath. So now once you've determined that your post is dead center in the hole, you can start adding your screws to secure this in place. So we're just gonna do it fairly loose to begin with and double check to make sure it hasn't shifted at all. It does look good still. So we're gonna continue with the screws. And I recommend putting at least four on here. You don't have to go crazy, but make sure that you put four and don't tighten them all the way down until all four are in place. So I'm leaving these pretty loose. I'm just making sure that I secure it first prior to socking it down. Turn this over, make sure that it's still dead center. It is, we're good there. And now we can just tighten these up all the way. Now we're gonna do the same thing. See that there? So we're gonna do the same thing on the other side now. All right, so once we've secured those to the bottom, now it's time to put these little covers over the top and that will thread on the balls to our joysticks. Just hold the bottom of the post to tighten that up. Same thing on the other side. And there you have it. Both joysticks are fully installed. So the next thing we need to do now is set up our zero delay LED USB encoders. So here I put them both right here on the back side of the control board. Now, ideally I'd like to have put them over here, right in front of the controls if possible, but I just don't have enough room, which seems to be the theme with this particular unit that we have here. So I put them right here in the center and I just put them on with some double-sided Velcro here. So one side stuck to the back side of the control panel, the other side stuck to the back side of the zero delay USB encoder. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take out these cables here. So there's actually four of them stuck together on here, which is perfect for my setup because I have four buttons. So now in order to do this, what we need to do is we need to set up each side exactly the same way since these are both the same uh, model USB encoder. So that means that if we put our wiring here from this unit right here, and we go and we tie the same line, which is this one here, into let's say this first slot right here, that means we have to do the exact same thing on the other side. So if we grab our other set here, we're gonna do the same thing on this end. So we're gonna go into this piece here. So we're gonna go into the exact same terminal on this one. And you have to repeat this process for each of these buttons. So we'll go to the next one now. We're gonna to go to this first red one over here. Same thing over here this first red one. And 
and that's going to go to this one here. And for this red one, which is here. So you get what I'm saying. Each one that you do on this side, you have to do the exact same way on that side. So each button is going to go to the exact same terminal on our encoder all the way throughout this entire board. Now we do have to do the exact same thing with our start buttons here. So we've already done the regular buttons. Now we're going to do our start button here. So this one's going to be going into my fifth terminal. Same thing on this side, fifth terminal. So now we're going to set up our joysticks. The joysticks now are a larger cable. You can see they actually have five wires in them. So they actually plug in up here on the tops of our boards. So we'll go ahead and plug these into our joysticks. And again, it's going to work the same way, but there's no room for error on these because there's only one slot for them. So we'll plug that into our joystick. Then we'll plug it into our encoder here. And then we do the exact same thing on the other side. And like I said, there's no way to confuse this because there's only one slot for these particular cables. So once everything's set up here, it's best to put a couple zip ties just to clean this up a little bit. I did separate most of these just to um, have a little bit more space while I worked. I'm just gonna put a couple small zip ties on here just to tighten them up so they're not all hanging down. And you don't wanna go super crazy with tightening these. All right, so I have all of my buttons put in. Now I'm gonna put in my two select buttons, which you can see are on both sides of, of my cabinet here installed into the side panels. So in order to do that, I'm gonna take out this front panel so I can access the inside. Drop my control panel down on top. All right, so to do the select buttons here, I've wired in my um, select wire into the USB encoder on each side. Now I'm gonna just put it in and connect it to my select button on the player one side. And do the same thing on this side for player two. Next thing we need to do now is plug in our USB connection to each of our encoders, which plugs in right here and here. So we'll go ahead and plug these in like so. And these are gonna be how we connect these controls into our Raspberry Pi. You can see on the other end here, it's a regular USB. And we'll actually tuck these in here and we're gonna do this from the back side. So we're all done here with the front of our panel, so we can put the front panel back on here just by lifting the control board up and sliding the panel into the two grooves on each side. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna turn over the cabinet to the back side. We're gonna put in this power strip on the bottom, which I just fixed to the bottom with some Velcro strips. And the next thing we need to do is take our Raspberry Pi with our game collection card inserted into the back. We have our RetroPie Guy 256 gigabyte game collection card already inserted in here. So we're gonna mount that to the side after we plug in the power supply from our power strip at the bottom. So we'll plug that in there. And we can actually go ahead and plug in our HDMI cable from our board here and plug that right into the side as well so we don't have to go back in here. And we're just gonna mount this to the side. I have some Velcro strips on the back rather than screwing it into the back wall. All right, so now we're gonna connect the audio amp the same way. You can see we have our Velcro strip here, another one on this side of our arcade cabinet. So first thing we're gonna to do to connect this is we're gonna first take our power cable that's plugged into our power strip and plug it into the power input up here on the top of it. Next, we'll take our wires for our speaker, which you can see are hanging down here, the two yellow wires here. So we're gonna take those and they're gonna plug into the R side. So we're gonna pull down on this little tab here. It opens the slot. We'll just push in the wire 
let go of the tab and you can see that it locks it into place. Do the same thing with the other one. Pull the tab, insert the wire, let go of the tab, lock it in place. Now we're gonna take our audio cable here, which is a 3.5 millimeter audio cable, and we're gonna plug that into the MP3 port, which is on the opposite end as the power supply. So plug that in, and now we can go and mount this to the side of our arcade cabinet. Just make sure you're super careful because these wires from the speaker are very short. You don't want them to be um, pulling too much. So there's a little slack on here, so that is good there. So now the next thing that we need to do is we need to take the other end of our audio cable, and we need to plug that into the side of our Raspberry Pi. So when we do it like this, now there's two ways. We can actually go through the um, board up here, but I recommend going directly from the Pi because you do get better sound quality that way, and you don't have to change any of the settings on RetroPie. All right, and the last thing that we need to do on the back side of our cabinet is take the USB cables from our encoders and plug those directly into our Raspberry Pi 4. So this will be player one. You can see here, this is player two. So we'll plug that one in as well. And now the next step is gonna be just powering this on. All right, so once you boot up your system, you'll come to this welcome screen after everything loads in and it'll say, welcome to GamePads Detected. And those are coming from your USB encoders that are plugged into your Raspberry Pi. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna configure player one, which will be here on the left-hand side. So we're gonna hold down um, any button on here and we'll jump into the configuring page. So here we're on the configuring page and it's gonna ask you to put in your D-pads and your, your various controls that are on here. So in order to do this, we're just gonna go through the list so it says D-pad up, so we'll go to our joystick, we'll, we'll do up. D-pad down, we'll go down. D-pad left, we'll go left. D-pad right, we'll go right. Now start, so we'll hit this button here. Select, now my select button's on the side. Yours is probably gonna be on your control board. And now for buttons A, B, X, and Y, you can do this any which way. Now I only have four buttons. Uh, you likely have six ideally. So you would have to go through your um, shoulder buttons as well to do this. So you can configure this any which way. I'm gonna do it um, as A in the bottom left corner, then B, X up top, and then Y. And now for your shoulders, you would do if you have the additional ones, you could add those in as well. If you go to our YouTube channel, there is a great video on the 8BitDo um, arcade stick, which has a similar configuration to um, an arcade one-up configuration here. So you could use that as reference uh, I think that the way that we do it there is probably the best way for a six button or eight button configuration. So for all these, since I only have four buttons on this particular arcade one-up cabinet, I'm just gonna skip all these. To skip the remaining options, you're just gonna hold any of the buttons you've already mapped, which in this case would be any button here. So we're just gonna hold this for each of these options and we'll go down to the hot key, which is our final option here. So the hotkey is going to be the button that we hit in order to exit games and go back to our game collection menu. So we're going to use the select button. So that's on the side for me. I'll hit that. And now to confirm everything and save your configuration, you're just going to hit the A button. That'll load for a second and then we'll advance. So now we're into our game collections here. But the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go back into the main menu. So we'll hit our start button. We'll jump down to configure input and we're going to set up player two. So when we hit configure input, we'll hit A. It'll ask, are you sure you want to configure input? We're going to select yes. So we have the two game pads detected. Now we're just going to jump over to player two. And you could do this for however many players you have. You might have a four player setup. So we'll hold down a button to grab this one here. And we'll do the exact same thing. So we'll do D-pad up, D-pad down, D-pad left, D-pad right. Um, start, select on the side. A, B, X, Y, and then again, we'll skip past all these and go right down to our hotkey. And now sometimes when you do this, depending on how you set up your USB inputs into your Raspberry Pi, you might end up with GamePad 2 over here, GamePad 1 over here. Um, it's just a, obviously a 50-50 chance that you get it right on here. If that's the case, all you have to do is just switch to your USB um, 
plugins on your Raspberry Pi. You don't have to go, you can go through this even if this is registering as GamePad 1 and that's GamePad 2, it doesn't make any difference. Just go behind there and switch them out at any point in time and they'll switch right back. So ideally you want this one to be GamePad 1, this one GamePad 2, but it doesn't really matter either. But if you're playing by yourself and you're playing over here and you want to exit a game, you'd have to come over here and hit start and select at the same time in order to exit that game. So. It's good to just swap those out if it is registering uh, differently there. So we'll hit A to save this. And jump out and you can see that this one's controlling the game collections and same thing here. So we're all set now. Um, I'm gonna jump in here and just make sure that our audio is working. So we'll just go to our menu here. and Yeah, we can already hear that the gameplay uh, previews here are already loading with full sound. So everything is functioning properly. So let's jump into a game just to uh, verify that everything is working properly on here. Jump into Super Mario Brothers here. And that's another really cool thing about this particular card is we can play games that were meant for home consoles but on the arcade setup. Now you can't play all of them that way but um, you could actually set up a Bluetooth controller. So you could just power on that Bluetooth controller when you get to a game that doesn't work on here, like an N64 game. Uh, you could just have that Bluetooth controller, hit the start button, and then go in and power it right from there. You don't even have to use the um, setup here, which is really cool to have that option. So let's jump in here and make sure everything's working properly. And it is. All right, so we're just gonna exit that game. So I'm gonna hit my select button and the start button at the same time. You see that backs me right out into my uh, game collection menu here. And that's it. All right, so that's gonna do it for today. We fully modified this arcade one-up cabinet to incorporate the Raspberry Pi 4 with RetroPie. So now on this particular unit, we have over 24,000 different games on here um, versus just the four games that came stock on here. So it's certainly an upgrade. Um, you can get this card from us directly on our website, www.retropieguy.com. This is our 256 gigabyte Ultimate Game Collection card. It's got a whole bunch of different game collections from various consoles on here. We will be doing some walkthrough videos with this cabinet here as well, and some gameplay demos, so definitely stay tuned for those. Uh, we'll probably do those very soon. We're also gonna do another video um, demoing this in the dark so you can see all the LEDs on the um, control board here, which is really cool really nice feature um, for this particular build. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We do a whole bunch of different tutorials, gameplay demos, and product reviews as well. And of course, check us out on our website, www.retropieguy.com. Thanks for watching.